Hey everyone, welcome to New Gameplay Today. My name is Marcus Stewart. I have Kyle Hilliard with me. Hey, so far so good because there's a secret behind the waterfall. So we're in good shape right out of the gate. <laughs> yes, yes. We're looking at Sandland today, which has already proven that it's a real video game because it has a secret behind the waterfall, which I, I think we all know that's like that's the benchmark for whether or not your game is legit or not. That's yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, this is a an upcoming game by uh, published by Bandai Namco, based on the 2000 manga, uh, illustrated and written by uh, the late great Akira Toriyama, who you know you might know as the creator of Dragon Ball. Uh, this is uh, the first video game for Sandland. It, it's been around for God over 20 years, but it feels like it's. Or not even feels like it's, it's making a big comeback because you got the game coming out uh, next month. We've got the 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 Hulu series that premiered recently. That's like a, a retelling of the animated movie that came out last year. Uh, Kyle, you and I are big Dragon Ball fans. We talked about Dragon Ball ad nauseum on, on Super Replay and whatnot. Uh, and will, no matter what protests <laughs> come up. No, I don't think anyone minds. Exactly. Tell me, what is your familiarity with Sandland just as a franchise? I mean, really remarkably little. In fact, I my first sort of uh, t taking it in and like noticing it was I think the, the, there was a film, right? You just mentioned that came yeah. out in Japan a couple years ago. It wasn't that long ago. Yeah, it was last year, right? apparently. Last year, okay. And then and it's and it hasn't come. I don't even know. I mean, I'm sorry if I'm getting all these details wrong, but I, my understanding was it wasn't like the, the sort of English version hadn't really come over here yet. Well, but that was like kind of. So the Hulu series is apparently right. like a retelling of that movie, but cut up into episodes. It's kind of like you know, like the first few. Uh, uh, seasons of, or like arcs of Dragon Ball Super are just retellings of the two super movies. Yeah, like the like the, the Resurrection F and uh, and the um the the God God of Destruction movie. Battle, it, it's, of, Battle of Gods. Battle of yeah. the Gods. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like kind of like that, from what I understand. Okay. Yeah. Weird. But yeah. So that's like that was like the first time I noticed it. I didn't realize it was like. I mean, it's you just look at it and you're like, okay, this is a Toriyama joint. Right, like you can just tell. Um, but I was surprised at the time to learn. It's like, oh no, no, this 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 is based on like a manga that came out in two thousand. Like I, I totally missed it over that time. I never read it. I never saw anything about it. Um, and this video game will very likely because I I believe I I think I'm probably going to be reviewing it. We'll see. Um, will be my first interaction with it because I haven't read the manga or seen the movie or watched the anime or anything. Which maybe I should before this comes out. Actually, yeah, I've heard the manga is pretty short. Like it, it's it's not that. I think it's only like a fourteen volumes. I I want to say something like that. But I've heard like you can get through it pretty quick. Okay. Um, yeah. Maybe I should check that out. Yeah. So we're looking at uh, this dungeon here. I got to go to Bandai Namco's office in Irvine, California, and play. A uh, couple of hours of the game, including this section. This is not my gameplay that we're watching. This is a B-roll that was provided by Bandai Namco. But it's uh, I played uh, completely different slices than the public demo that went out recently, which was pretty much just the open world of Sandland. But we're looking at sort of what will be kind of the end of Sandland proper, because if you've been following the game, they recently revealed a new section called Forest Land which is like brand new to the franchise is basically a uh you know as the name suggests a green force jungle area of the game uh like pretty much a different biome entirely and so uh this uh kodoma ruins is kind of the in between and what was uh i have a written up preview now on gameinformer.com that you can check out where i share a lot more in-depth thoughts about what i played and my thoughts on it but one thing that struck me as they were telling me this part is that you don't reach this section and by an extension forest land until like maybe 30 hours into the game so like you're gonna be in this is late yeah okay. or, or mid game because like forest land is like its own other landmass. uh so one this game is apparently quite big and also it's evidently pretty lengthy <laughs> there's okay there's a lot going on in in, in sandland of seeing doing <laughs> some surfing here and of course the big thing with sandland is vehicle uh like piloting and combat we got a hover car here that's great for uh you know water water traversal uh but it, what i like about the playing the section is that just that the game allows you to take vehicles in a bunch of different places like even areas where you can go on foot like you can run upstairs with them and you can open up chests while you're still in the vehicle, which is really nice. 
Uh, oh, that's cool. Yeah, that eliminates a lot of potential. Just like oh, I got to go back and forth on here. Uh, you know, collect other like uh, materials while in the in a vehicle. And I, I do like the vehicle gameplay. Like I, as an old school car combat fan, I, I couldn't help but think of Twisted Metal quite a bit as I was playing. Saying like you can switch between a tank and like a like different types of mech suits basically like one's like a traditional mech where you can just punch guys to death and then one is like a jumpy suit that it's got like a machine gun but it's got like really long legs and it's basically used to jump really high up to reach uh like some like vertical places there's there's even like certain like environmental puzzles around that specific suit where it's like oh this is there's a chest really high up how are you gonna get up there (laughs) so yeah we're entering a, a boss room right now I saw it looked like they were throwing out like Dragon Ball style capsules to get uh, their vehicles and stuff. But is that just that's not like this is completely separate from Dragon Ball, right? That's just like a style that Toriyama likes. Of, yeah. Like, putting vehicles in, in tiny capsules. It doesn't have anything to do with the capsule corp, right? No, unless I'm unless there's something I'm not aware of. I, I could never tell what uh, Beezlebub, who's the protagonist, like what he's actually throwing. But yeah, as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, is he throwing? It looks like he's throwing a capsule. And I, I just took that as like, maybe that's just Toriyama's thing. It's just like, I mean, it makes sense. It's the easiest like way to be like, I don't know. How do I get a tank here without having to write a bunch of things to justify getting it here what if you just threw it out and it appeared i don't know yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean apparently from what i understand toriyama like i know he's known for dragon ball and this martial arts anime but i think his like favorite thing to draw was vehicles like he's he it seemed like he really enjoyed that so maybe that's why he's like well if i have a bunch of capsules i can draw a bunch of different vehicles and that's fun you know i, I always did like his vehicle like i like the way cars look in, in dragon ball like they're weird flying cars and like even like or just like machinery, like, you know, like Robo and Chrono Trigger, I thought had like a yeah. cool design. And I, I like that he, he almost has like a, um, almost like a Star Wars-esque kind of approach where it's like futuristic, but it looks crappy. Yes, yeah, it's, it looks used, right? Which is cool. Yeah, like nothing's really like sleek or like super uh, cleaned up sci-fi. It's just like a, it looks like someone that was really smart took a bunch of junk and slapped this together and created a hovercraft. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, what I, I I got to play this boss fight as well. You get, and what I like about this fight is that you know you could just stay in the hovercraft and and sort of like dodge and, and fire like you got the hover which you can use to jump over the tentacles. But if you notice, there's like patches of land there, and about yeah. like halfway through the fight, I kind of smartened up. I was like, wait, there's like times where the kraken is largely stationary. What if I just switch to the tank since I got some solid ground here? And the tank is like more powerful and I'll just like take some, a few shots with the tank because you can seamlessly oh, okay. switch between uh, vehicles with a weapon wheel. And what I what is also nice is that you don't have to get out of a vehicle to switch to another one. Like you can literally just pick another vehicle and it just transforms with you still in the cockpit. See, it, it's oh, I see. OK, that's cool. Yeah. And it's also fun to do it while you're moving like the motorcycle that is sort of like your it, it's the best one for traversal because of how fast it is. So like, OK, so this. Bandai also had the same idea I had, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> Where I was just like, wait, I can just do this because the tank can take a little bit more damage. So I, even if it's not as, you know, quick to dodge, I, I can take a few hits and still you know, dish out some damage. That's um, cool. Okay. But yeah, like I like being able to drive like the motorcycle and then seamlessly switch to another vehicle. It feels really good <laughs> because it's just like, it oh, sounds I, like your momentum stays consistent as well if the, if, like if, if, yeah like i mean i'm understanding what you're saying right for the most part yeah it does like you know obviously the speed changes because you know it's just some vehicles are faster than others so like but like your moment like you don't stop like you'll still be going you just might slow down or speed up depending on what you're changing to that's nice i just i just like that you don't have to stop get out get a different right like i like that you can just sort of bounce between vehicles that seems like smart design yeah and that's funny because i was doing that and for like the first half hours playing this until i was like what if i just try this and i was like oh okay i could just do this instead this, this saves so much time so yeah this is kind of the uh end of this fight and we're gonna jump ahead to just a cut of a forest land here like i said brand new biome we got the uh, motorcycle which is again sort of your main Pretty much the one that's used for just general getting around, though. There also are, I found, like, dinosaurs that you can ride, too. Like, there'll be, like, certain oh, really? spots where be, like, a dinosaur that you can just mount and run around in. And you can attack people with it. And I believe the dinosaur also has the perk of, like, other... 
because you know there's wildlife that roams around and the general wildlife won't attack you or some of them won't attack you as often because you're on a you're on a scary dinosaur they're like oh we don't want to mess with that so if you kind of want to tr you know travel a little bit more un unimpeded you should probably just grab a dinosaur oh interesting okay are you doing combat on foot at all or yeah like you have a, a like okay. he's above his like basic combos and stuff and he, all the characters like him and his party members have like upgrade trees to make their attacks better and, and whatnot it's like a pretty standard upgrade tree from what i saw but I, I think the game definitely encourages you to use the vehicles more so. Like, you can't take down, at least the stuff that I play, like, most things just fine for the most part. But, like, bigger, like, enemy vehicles, you know, enemies have tanks and their own, like, mechs and stuff. And then even, like, stronger animals can, they can do a number on you real quick. So, it's like, okay, I should probably just get an, I should probably just use a thing that has a gun <laughs> instead of my fist. Yeah, no, that makes sense, yeah. But, yeah, I'm interested to see how that scales as you upgrade Beezlebub himself, where it's like, will he ever become too like capable enough on his own to where you don't need the vehicle as much or will he always just be like a rung or two below your vehicles especially as we're seeing here the customization stuff where you can outfit your vehicles with a ton of different weapons and and like it like i see like cosmetic stuff and and there's like even more weapons that you can buy from the town building uh like you get your own town to run which uh if you read my preview i have an exclusive breakdown of how that works but you can put like lasers and like particle cannons and all kinds of stuff on your uh, vehicles and and level them up and it seems like a pretty deep system for those that like are really into number crunching because it's like mm -hmm. you know it's like trading off different properties of like okay this one fires faster but it's at the expense of power and and just like what do i what do i want exactly like what do i value what fits my play style that you know that kind of thing so yeah a lot to play around with but uh yeah that's a, a good look at Sandland. Uh, like I said, there's a playable demo out now if you want to sort of get a hands-on feel for yourself. But I'm 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 interested in playing it. You know, like I, I'm as a Toriyama fan, I was already interested in, in checking it out. And you know, with his passing, it, it made me even more so. Where it's like, well, this almost feels like one of his like last big hurrahs. So I, I definitely want to get in there and spend some time with it. But I like the look. I thought the game had like. A good sense of humor and just like that signature Toriyama style that I like. Uh, the open world stuff I'm a little bit more worried about. It. Well, and that's just for like just feeling generally weird about open worlds and like how engaging the side activities are. But yeah, you know, understandably. At least with like the main story, I, I want to check it out. This will be like my first dive into Sandland. But yeah, Kyle, any final thoughts? Uh, no, yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to checking it out. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to having an excuse to jump into this, this Toriyama world that I am not yet familiar with. Awesome. But yeah, Sandlands comes out April 26th for uh, PlayStation 4 and 5, as well as Xbox Series X and PC. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.